Welcome to this installment of uh, Frank and Mary here in Northborough. This is uh, one of the, the this is the, the first show that I'm doing with Chris Linquist, whom I had invited to be um, my co-host um, uh, during the winter while my usual co-host co was gone, but then came COVID-19. So we are now uh, not in the studio, obviously. Uh, we, are, we are virtual. Um, thanks to the help of uh, Northbrook Cable, uh, and and we're t we're going to be talking to you about kind of how how we've how we've we've been dealing with it, how the library has been dealing with COVID nineteen, how my firm has been dealing with it. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of advice on how you should be dealing with it from a from a from a in terms of your documents from that perspective. Uh, and then we're going to, um, so we're, we're just doing this show so that you'll have a sense of how this show works. We're hoping to be doing this show uh, weekly now uh, uh, until the COVID-19, um, I don't want to call it a crisis, the thing, until our lives in COVID-19 have changed. Uh, but first of all, Chris, um, or I just wanted to also say, you know, you know, just as kind of a disclaimer, Chris and I, uh, we're trying to get you information that you think we think would be valid for you. You know, neither of us is a healthcare professional. We're not trying to give you any advice about these things. We're trying to get you information that that we're, we we think is up to date, but we we kind of can't vouch for that ourselves. So anyway, thank you for watching, and Chris, thank you very much for doing all of this. Right. So we well, we were just we're, so, so we were talking beforehand about you know just kind of telling folks about kind of where things are right now. And, and so can you just talk about that from your perspective, dealing with the library? Arthur, I was just gonna say thank you again for allowing me to talk about you know, the library and, and what's happening you know, in terms of providing remote services. This is kind of the new normal now, right? So we're all dealing with this. Fortunately, we have um, technology and resources that enable us to, I guess, communicate remotely. And so thank you and, and thank Kathy Dalglish and, and Dana Volk and uh, the cable access uh, station for enabling us to do this. So I really appreciate that. Um, just to give you an update on, on what's happening at the library. So we are closed to the public and we have been closed to the public since March 17th. Um, all uh, non-essential services, all buildings in the town of Northborough have been closed, but staff are in the building and we're working um, you know, behind the scenes um, we are not obviously circulating, circulating materials, people don't have access to our collections, but fortunately we have really um, a wide range of electronic resources available that everybody can access via our website. So I just want to give our website up front so that everybody knows you know, how, to, how to get there, and it's www.northboroughlibrary.org. And you go there and uh, you go to our electronic resources page there is a, a long list of electronic resources that are available, you know, ebooks, uh, e-videos, e-audio. I mean, a lot of people, you know, are used to using, um, you know, books on tape or books on CD. So you can also get uh, e-audio, so electronic audio, just like you would uh, if you were, you know, commuting and you were using a CD to listen to a book. You can do that off of our website. All you do need is your library card. So um, in order to access most of these materials, you're going to be needing your library card. And we are there, by the way. Our staff, our professional librarians, our support staff are working. Um, some of us are working at the library. Some of us are working at home. Um, and we are there to answer any questions. Uh, if we get phone calls, you can still call the library. And our librarians will, will help you if you need access to the electronic uh, resources or you can send us an email. So you just go to our website, our contact information is there, and the librarians and I will be uh, happy to help. Right now, um, because of what's happening, um, the town administrator has asked uh, all non-essential services to be available from Monday through Thursday, eight to four. Uh, and then on Friday, uh, non-essential staff are, are working from home. So, but we're still gonna be responding to emails Monday through Friday, eight to four, and if, and if you uh, don't have access to email, you can call our main number, uh, you know, 508-393-5025. And uh, during the eight to four time frame, you know, the librarians and I can, can assist people. So that's kind of what we're doing. It's kind of the new normal. Uh, it's a temporary plan of service in a sense. 
And obviously, we don't know when this is going to end, but we want to be there to help people, uh, you know, provide information, provide access to the resources that we have uh, during this crisis. So that's that's those are that's a great service that you're that you're providing, and you're saying that there is so there are real people yes. really there that you can call absolutely uh, during this during this difficult time, and so even if you are kind of straining with trying to get access over the e, the e process the electronic process absolutely. and you want to call somebody at the library just to say help me figure this out right absolutely yeah you're saying and, those you folks know, are going know. to be there. and i'm yeah. sure that and i'm sure that the, our friends at, at north pro cable will be uh, actually putting up that that your information the 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 information regarding you know that not only your phone number Yep. But also the the uh, the the uh, the e information, so that they can try to contact you directly. Correct. And and on that point, so just yesterday we got permission. So we have um, a subscription to something called Niche Academy, N I S C H E Academy, and they provide tutorials. They're two three minute tutorials that are available on our website. How to use these electronic resources or e resources. And we just got permission from them, even though you know it's it's copyrighted material, to use that and to uh, ask Dana and and uh, NATV to um, broadcast that information. So they're allowing us to do that through April, and they could extend it if we need to. Um, so I think there's about half a dozen or so that we're going to be broadcasting. So I think Dana now has access and can provide the links to those, and we'll be broadcasting those videos. And they are basic, you know, again, two to three minute tutorials how to use um, Overdrive, for, for example, or Libby um, in order to download you know, onto your device. Now, we know everybody has a different device. I use my iPhone. Some people have a Kindle. Some people use uh, you know, a laptop or a tablet. And there are various ways to uh, download. But you know, we can help you do that. The librarians have been trained. And we're happy to do that by phone, by email, however we can. So we want people to be using these resources. Uh, this is the time, you know, obviously when, when people can't access physical books and physical collections and, you know, just go to our website and uh, if you have questions, we're happy to help, uh, you know, uh, answer them and, and, and ask, I guess, questions about what your device is so that we can help you more. And, and by the way, just in a, in a I, I want to say an unrelated but a related thing, I think in the course of our earlier conversation we had, you told me about a service that's been provided by the library where, where one of your librarians will actually do book readings to kids. That's exactly right. So Katrina Ireland uh, is our children's librarian and Katrina has taken it upon herself to be doing uh, story hours, you know, via YouTube, via FaceTime, uh, you know, just again, engaging uh, kids in the community, doing her normal story hour in the space where she normally does it in our meeting room. And she's, you know, doing that. Uh, I think she started doing it last week. And again, that's, you know, kind of something that we're obviously having to do during this time period, just kind of thinking outside the box. How can we, keep, how, how can we continue to engage kids and parents? And Katrina has just stepped up. And, and uh, I think we've had over 500 views, you know, already. Um, I think she was there yesterday on Wednesday uh, doing another story hour. She's doing something this Friday um, where uh, there's a book called uh, Hunting the Bear, I believe it's called. And it's a story uh, about, you know, kids going around the community and looking in uh, people's windows to find a, a teddy bear. So this is something that's going to be happening this Friday. And, you know, parents and kids will be going around. And obviously you can go outside and hopefully people will be putting teddy bears in their windows. And it's kind of like a nice uh, game and, and an outdoor activity. And, and Katrina's going to read this book, you know, uh, Friday morning, and then parents and kids can go out and hopefully people, and I just want to, you know, encourage people, if you have a teddy bear at home, uh, put it in a window in your house and kids will be going around the neighborhood looking for those bears. <laughs> that is, that is such a great idea. That yeah. just, I guess, I guess that, that kind of, it really gives you a sense of how people at the local level are just stepping up now. You know, sure. I mean, they're understanding these are difficult times. They're trying to not get too stressed out about this, and they're just trying to respond. And I guess the other the other thing that I would I would just mention is that for people who are watching us today, um, I think it would be great 
And I hope that Dana can just provide that, you know, the, any, any links to the station, if, if they could be, want to be reaching out to us regarding this show. If there are things like that, that they want to have on this show or on a different show, we'd really like to know about that. Because I know when you were talking about the notion of reading to young people, it's, I, I, it struck me that might be a great thing for seniors right now, right? Yes. To have some, you know, and, and I know we, we had talked a little bit about even having a guest come on the show or even having a piece of the show be some I, kind of reading, right? Yes. From, you know, what could be any number of sources, whether it's a poem, whether it is an essay. So I guess we'd be very interested, both Chris, you and I would be really interested if anyone yes. thinks that would be a good idea, you know, thinks it would be a good idea to actually have that on a show. We don't want to be you know, sure. doing doing stuff for nothing. But if, if folks think it's a good idea, then we should be trying this. It, it, this this notion, I think, what we're what we're all going through right now. Yes. All of us, and maybe Chris, you're more of a techie. You, you were probably more into this. But for many sure. of, I'll say for me and my many of my friendly lawyers, my associates at Myrick O'Connell, who have tried to studiously avoid doing all of this video conferencing and all this stuff just because you know we got our day jobs and who had time to do this you know to figure it out now suddenly it, it's it's it, it can be regarded as a real positive thing right, right. that right. it's forcing people to kind of think about these wonderful resources that that's we right. kind of never knew we had you know so that's a pretty that's a pretty fortunate thing so that's yeah. great I, so, I was so, just saying, Arthur, fortunately, the infrastructure is in place. I mean, you know, most people, hopefully, they have um, Internet access at home uh, right. and they're able to connect to the Internet. I mean, that's number one. I mean, obviously, you know, we need access to the Internet in order to do this kind of video conferencing to access the electronic resources. And um, and then, you know, I think staff. Uh, whether, you know, the library, the senior center, uh, recreation, town uh, departments are still operating. Again, obviously, we're close to the public, but we're still there. We're able to respond to emails and phone calls. Uh, town hall, I know the staff is still there working uh, in the building. I, right now, just so everyone is aware, we're working on a kind of um, split shifts. So non-essential uh, services, we're doing A, B, uh, kind of uh, in, in, at the library. I have a group of librarians that are there at the library today. And um, and then we're going to be alternating kind of Monday, Wednesday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, so that we're not on top of each other, so that we're going to spread out. You know, we're doing social distancing, obviously. That's, that's the new normal. But we're still going to be providing services as best we can. And questions, you know, concerns. Um, we're an information provider. That's kind of our mission. Um, we obviously want to, you know, help people in this situation. We know people are hunkering down at home and they're looking for things to do. And certainly reading is, is a, a great resource, you know, rec whether it's recreational reading. Kids are at home doing remote learning. And we know hopefully we're going to be able to get Greg Martineau, the superintendent of schools, on at one of the shows so that he can talk about what the teachers and uh, administrators are doing in order to uh, help kids, you know, continue to be learning. You know, this is not a, an extended vacation. I think as Governor Baker said, you're, you're home, but you're hopefully doing some remote learning, right? <laughs> right, right. Well, so so from, from my perspective, let me tell you. So I, I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm at home. I was actually um, going to go upstairs and put on my suit for this show. And then I just said, <laughs> well, this is stupid. Everybody, everybody realizes that everybody is at home. So kill the suit, you know? And I'll say from my own perspective, I know what my wife has been doing, uh, and we are, is she is she had been wanting to learn some Spanish, sure. So now she's learning a lot of Spanish. You know, <laughs> she's got a, right. She's got the whole thing, and she's doing it by on the internet, and we're practicing at night because I had known yes. some Spanish from before. You know, and so it's like a great, yeah. You know, it is. Uh, let me put it this way: I think for so what is really hard right now. Uh, it's true for all seniors. It's especially true if you're if you're in a in a, a retirement community or whatever, and you're kind of locked down. You know, is is you you is to not succumb to total anxiety, sure. and just being depressed all the time. You know, yes. and 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 for to to the extent that you can work your way out of that. And I guess one of the reasons of this show for this show is to just give folks at the local level the sense 
that you're not alone. You know, it's not just national and state people. It's yes. just kind of local folks. So let me let me tell you, as I mentioned, Chris, I also wanted to talk to folks a little bit about a couple of of kind of legal, I want to say legal slash medical issues that folks want to be dealing should really should be dealing with right now. You know, so so I know uh, we all hope we're not going to get sick. <laughs> we all hope that, you know, we're going to be in our homes and we're going to be able to kind of, you know, you know, it, do this in place and therefore we're going to be fine. But given the fact that all the data indicates, you know, that seniors are, are much more at risk uh, if, if you do get sick, right? right? Then I think you also want to be ready for that, right? And, and, and I, I mentioned that because most seniors that I speak to, um, if I ask, if I go to one of my seminars and I say, so who has a healthcare proxy? Everybody raises their hand, literally everybody raises their hand. And then I say, so, so, so do you know where it is? Oh, well, that's a more of a kind of a question. Where, where did it, where is it exactly? It's in some pile. Is it in a, you know, is it in a, in a file? Is it, you know, kind of, where is it? Um, and so for those people who can't really answer that question right away, like, where is it? Uh, you really need to go find it, right? right? You really need to go find it. And if you've given it to, um, one of your children or someone because they're the person who are named on your healthcare proxy, you should talk to them about that and make sure that that proxy is available, right? To the extent that the, that the proxy is in your doctor's office at this point, that would be the best place for it to be. And I'll tell you that kind of going forward, the, the, the kind of the, typically the, one of the safest places for your healthcare proxy is with your doctor so that if there's an emergency and you're running a temperature, so you don't, you don't went nowhere to find it, and 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 you you need to go to the hospital. The the hospital can call your doctor, and the doctor can just scan it and send it to them. And now they're going to have that contact, right? Because the key, one of the key pieces of that of that healthcare proxy is kind of who's your proxy, and typically you right on the proxy that person's phone number or email address is listed because it doesn't help. For the doctor to know that you have a proxy, but not to be able to find the proxy, right? So that so that piece is really important. The other piece that I think is just is is really important is once again, I'll ask people, do you have a proxy? Well, you know, yes. So have you actually talked to the person you named in your proxy about how you want to be treated? Right. And the answer is typically no, right? And but they know, you know, I, I don't want to be connected to any machines, you know. Well, you know, that that may not be the case right now. You know, if if you're if you're getting COVID-19, right, and you're having trouble breathing as a result of that, but you're otherwise healthy, right, you may very well be okay with getting connected to a machine until you get better from this, right? So you want to be, you want to be, but if you're in the hospital and you're, and you're incapacitated and the doctor can't ask you any of that, right? They're going to ask the person who has your proxy, right? And if they don't know, you're really putting that person in a really difficult position, right? Sure. So I guess my, my, I would urge people to have this, to have this conversation, right? I mean, you know, you're probably talking to your kids now. Because if you're older, and once again, I I identify with this. Chris, you're a young guy. I'm I'm I just turned seventy. I'm in that at risk category, right? Yes. So yes. probably your kids are checking in at this point, and they're saying, you know, hot mom, dad, just check in. How you doing? Blah blah blah. Well, if one of them is the proxy, right? You may want to just have this conversation, just because. I mean, that's the whole point of having the conversation now is that if for some reason an emergency arises this now now your child knows right so it's just it's just really important so you so you need to be having that conversation also i should mention to you lawyers are an essential service who knew right so so when the governor you know closed down said non essential services go home um the, the we're actually an essential service right and and while we're not open to the public in general um, um, you know, lawyer, our lawyers are calling. You can call her up. You can, and and, and we're not on. And I, I mentioned that just because 
we as a class are, 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 are working, right? And so if you've got a question about this stuff and you want to talk to your lawyer, right? Or if you're a law you want your lawyer to send the healthcare proxy, which may be in his or her office to the person you want it to, you can reach them now, you know? I mean, you, you wouldn't necessarily think your lawyer would be around because it, we're, not a, we're not a pharmaceutical or a store or something, right? But, but those, it, or, or if you wanna talk to them right now, th these are really important times. These are really, the, these are really important times. So you just, I'm, I'm just saying in general, you wanna be paying attention, that's all. So, so Chris, I know that you, one of the, what you are tasked with doing um, after we finish this show is yes. finding our next guest. So we can't tell people right now who our next guest we will be. We can tell you that we are, our goal yeah. is to be doing yeah. this show. We've talked about it once a week yes. Uh, yes. while this COVID-19 is continuing. I know, Chris, you had talked about, you know, if we, if we possibly could getting the fire chief, who is also the head of the kind of this, this, the town's emergency response team, and and, and 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 maybe getting the superintendent of schools to talk about what is going on as far as the teaching of the kids and all of that. Those would be really really great things, right? And that because but you know people, I you know I'm I'm only here for comic relief. So you know you know whoever whoever you want to have on our show, that's what we're going to have on the show. But we'll but you know we'll we'll try to provide these things as in, informative to people. Sure. If people have got a, a particular request, because you know it's hard to reach out to people right now, who would you like to see? Who would you? And I know that in a, in a show that I do in a, a, a foreign town called Westboro, which is far away, which we did yesterday, we were talking to the head of the Department of Public of, of the Health Department. Sure. Um, apparently, in in Westboro, I don't know what the story is in Northboro. Apparently, in Westboro, there are three people who have tested positive. Right for COVID nineteen, so that they were kind of, he was kind of talking about how that system works. If right. you become, right. if you're the health department and you notify that someone is positive, you know what they do then. You know, so we may want to talk to somebody. So, so but the point is, we want these to be informative for you folks, right? Because you know you're sitting around and you're bored, and we just want to be you know providing you with valuable information. So, Chris. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for this. I think this, this is just great. It's great what the library is doing thank and they, you. in terms of just helping people, you know, and in, in, in many and in, in, in forcing people to become aware of the virtual world that we live in. Right. right. So thank you. And thank you to Dana. And as you said, to Dana and to Kathy Dalgleish, you know, this is, um, we, you know, Chris and I talked to these folks about doing this show because one of the, 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 among other things, I think we're going to come out of this with people much more aware of the importance of community TV, right? And of right. these stations right. in terms of providing really important information day to day, but also in emergencies like this. Absolutely. So, yeah. so we really want to thank those folks. Chris, thank you for coming on today. Thank you, uh, Arthur. And, uh, folks, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you in the, uh, the uh, next episode of Frank and Mary in Northborough. Uh, the COVID by the COVID-19 subsection or whatever. Thank you very much. And hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.